Hi guys, my name is Mari and I'm the program coordinator for the March Wellness and Fitness Center. Today I am going to be showing you some stretches and exercises that are great for low back health. Um, for the stretches, you can hold them for 15 to 30 seconds and do that a couple times just depending on how tight you are and how much you like to stretch. So the first one I'm going to show you is called the figure four. Going to get on your back and then bring one leg up, cross it over. And if it's more comfortable for you just to remain in this position, that's fine. Or you can go down to your back and then draw that leg up. And then you should feel that stretch right here in your leg. The next one I'm going to show you um, is with a band. And you can use a dog leash, a bell, if you have a TheraBand, that works fine also. And you put it around your foot, lie back, keep this leg nice and straight, you don't want a bend at all. And then bring your foot up until you feel a stretch in the back of your leg. So for some people that might just be down here, and for others that might mean a little bit further up. If your leg starts to shake at all in any of these, that means that you are stretching the muscle too much and then go ahead and release back down a little bit in whatever stretch you're doing. And then we're gonna bring our leg across our body to get a stretch on the outside of our leg once again. And then bring your leg over and out to the side to get a stretch in the inside of your leg. And the next one we're going to do, you can use a chair or a counter, um, anything you'd like for support. And then you're gonna start about hip width apart here with your legs, and then cross over with the leg that was closest to the counter support, and then push out your hip to the side. So you should be feeling the stretch right on the side of your hip. If it's too much on the front, that means that your hips are too far forward this way. And then if you want a further stretch on the side of your torso, go ahead and just lift your hand above your head. Yes. All right, and then the last stretch that we're going to do is going to be stretching um, your hip flexors and your quads. Some people prefer to put a pillow or something down on the ground uh, to kind of cushion your knee a little bit. So you're gonna go down on one knee, then the other leg to a 90 degree angle. And then you're going to lean forward with your hips until you feel a stretch in the front of your leg here. You wanna make sure that you're not leaning like this just with your upper back because you're not gonna get the stretch that way. So make sure you're actually leading with your hips on this one. And then if you wanna make this a little bit harder and add a little, little bit of a balance challenge, you can also grab and then you'll feel this even more so down the front of your leg into your quad. All right, so that's all for the stretches. And now for the exercises, you can do 15 to 20 repetitions, um, one to three sets, also just depending on um, you know, what level you're at, how strong you are, things like that. So this first one we're gonna do, you might have seen this one in old 80s videos, but it's actually quite effective to strengthen the sides of the hips here. Um, there's a lot of research that says for low back health, having nice strong hips and a strong core is really important, so that's what we're focusing on. You're gonna get on your side. Make sure your hips are stacked on top of each other so you're not rolled back at all or pushed forward. And I want you to pretend like your back is up against a wall, so I'm not arched in like this. Then your bottom leg is going to be bent for support wherever it's comfortable. Top leg nice and straight. And then you're just going to lift up to wherever it feels comfortable. And then go back down. You want to make sure that you're doing all these exercises really slow and controlled. So you don't want to just be going super fast. You're not going to get as much benefit from the exercise if you do it like that. 
And then another way that you can also strengthen the outside of your hips, um, if you have a TheraBand at home, like this one. These are also really easy to order online. Um, you can get them just like bands like these and then tie them. Um, you can get like, different resistance levels as well. This is a great tool to use uh, while you're at home and if you don't have access you know, to go to the gym. So for this one, I'm gonna put the band around my ankles. I'm gonna get a little bit of tightness within the band so I don't want it limp at all. Have a slight bend in your knees and then upper back and core like nice and tight so I don't wanna be bent over like this at all. So nice and tight, engaging the core. And then we're just going to take side steps. Notice how my um, upper body is also not leaning at all. That's something that people tend to do on this exercise. They'll go like this to kind of help out. My body's really smart that way. It tries to compensate for weakness. And for this one, you can just do like a couple steps back and forth if you don't have a lot of room. Or you can go down the hallway 10 steps, 10 steps back, and just do that a couple times. And you should feel a burning sensation right in this area where we were stretching a lot before. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is called a clamshell. We're gonna go back in this position on the ground. And then all those same concepts still apply. So my hips are stacked on top of each other. My back is nice and straight. But this time I'm gonna bend both my legs to about a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna keep my feet together and then lift my knee up like this. It's a pretty small range. So you don't want to try to roll backwards to get your leg further up. That's not going to be beneficial and that's allowing your bigger glute muscles to kick in and you really want to focus on your glute medius, your smaller rotator muscles. Just like that. And if you do have a TheraBand and you want to make this harder, you can put the band just right here um, on the other side of your knees, not on the knees themselves, to add a little bit of resistance. And another way that you can do this exercise if you're looking for more of a challenge is on your hands and knees. I'm gonna go like this. And you wanna make sure that your back isn't arched at all like that, so just nice and flat. And then I'm gonna bring my hip out to the side with my knee still bent. So just out of the front. Notice I'm not like rocking my body at all. I'm just moving that hip joint. Cool. And then um, the next round of exercises we're going to do is for focusing on your deep core muscles that work really hard to stabilize your low back as well. And these are ones that we kind of forget about a little bit when we're doing our, our typical crunches. onto your back and then tighten your deeper core so focus kind of on the, the lower portion of your abs not on your top section right here and push your back into the ground kind of like you're tucking your pelvis while you're doing that so instead of like this like this you can even just practice doing that a few times too these are called pelvic tilts then once you have that down, we're going to roll our leg out to the side. So I'm nice and flexed, core stable in here. I'm still able to breathe the whole time, so I'm not holding my breath at all as I'm doing this. And then out. And each person's range of motion on this is going to be different as well. Some people might only be able to go to here before their, their hips on the other side. And then some people are able to go down quite a bit further. Keeping that core tight and back up to center. Cool. And then the next one is called a march. So we're going to be lifting up and then slowly back down. This one especially is really important to go nice and slow and controlled. So counting one, two, three. And then the last 
last one, you're going to straighten your leg and then slowly lower it. And before you get to the ground, so you don't want to plop your leg down, you want it still hovering. And then bring it back up, keeping that core engaged the whole time. And then if you want to make these exercises a bit more challenging, if you have something like a foam roller at home, or you can even roll up another yoga mat or a couple towels, you can put this down. And then you really want to make sure your head is rested on the foam roller itself. You don't want your head dangling off at all. And then all the same concepts apply. Nice tight core, back is flat to the foam roller here. And then arms can just be at your side for a little bit of support. And then you can still do all of those. It just makes it a little bit harder because you have now a greater range to work with and you also have to do a bit more stabilizing because of the foam roller. All right, so the next one we're going to do is a bridge. We're back down on our back here. Arms can just be at the side. Engage the core and then lift up. You don't want to go too far. You don't need to arch your back like that at all, just so that you're creating a nice straight line from your knees to your head. And then you can squeeze the glutes a bit once you get to the top. And then if you want to add a challenge, you can just stay in this position for 10 seconds, 30 seconds. Challenge yourself, see how long you can um, be able to hold that for. And then if you want to make it a bit harder, you can do a single leg. And then you can go up and down the single leg. All right, and then the last exercise we are going to do um, is a wall squat. So there's a lot of variations of squats out there. I really like this one because it's forcing your back to stay flat um, against the wall and also allows you to sit back a little bit more so that your knees are staying over your ankles. So I'm going to step out a little bit, feet are hip width apart, and then squat down. And you can go to whatever um, angle is most comfortable for you. You don't have to go all the way down to 90 degrees at first. You can just go halfway, sliding up and down. Notice how my back is staying nice and straight because of the wall. Knees are over my ankles. And then you can just sit and rest in this position for a little bit. So you can challenge yourself, try to do um, you know, 10 repetitions going up and down and then a 10 second hold, or 30 repetitions up and down and then a 30 second hold and see how many repetitions you can get. All right, and that's it. Thank you guys so much for um, watching today. I'll also have all these exercises um, with descriptions and pictures available as well with a link.